this is the review you're looking for. All right, let's just get into this. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. This is the final chapter in the Skywalker saga of Star Wars. It's nine episodes. This is the ninth one. And does J.J. Abrams, he's back in the director's seat after taking a break from episode seven, giving it to Ryan Johnson in episode eight, now back in episode nine. So does he screw the pooch or does he actually make something that us as fans are gonna enjoy? I don't really think there's gonna be any winning in this movie for J.J. Abrams because people are gonna be pissed at one thing or another within the film. Is it perfect? No, not at all, but it is fun. Now the pace of the first third to maybe even half of the film, way too quick, especially for a Star Wars film. I mean, these movies, especially when you think about the first three episodes, episode four, five, and six, they are slow, they are deliberate, they breathe, they just take their time in it, unveiling the story to really just draw us in. And in this, the action is just boom, 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 just go, 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 go. And the story is like that as well. And it just, it felt rushed. And I wanted more time to breathe. I wanted the story to develop a little slower so that I could just become more invested in it especially because I'm coming off of episode seven and episode eight. Now, both of those were kind of faster paced also when you take into consideration what Star Wars is as the, the previous films. But especially in this one, in that first third to half, I mean, it just jumped from scene to scene, action to action. Is it exciting? Yes, absolutely it is. But it's just still way too quick. Now, Leia, her character, I mean, Carrie Fisher died in 2016. So she's not even around to play her character. So they're using archival footage, archival audio, making her CGI. And for the most part, it was really good. The very beginning when we first see Leia on screen, it's a little rough. And even the voice sounds just a little off. Now, I don't know why that is. Maybe that's just because of I'm seeing something that I know is not her and so it's my mind is playing tricks, but it just felt just a tiny off. I mean, she had, Carrie Fisher was a smoker for at least part of her life and so she kind of had a little bit of a gravel to her voice. And the first couple of lines or scenes even with Leia on screen, she didn't have that. Her voice was just a little too clean. Maybe it was just cleaned up too much. I don't know exactly what it is, but that, just in that small bit, was a little off. The rest of the film though, I loved her in it. I thought the CGI, everything that they're doing was really good and it was super convincing. And honestly, I forgot that I was watching somebody who didn't exist anymore. There are a bunch of new worlds in this and I loved it. I thought it was great. There, there is a scene at the very beginning of the film where something is happening and so we get to see a bunch of worlds for very short periods of time. And that was kind of cool. I just, it would have been awesome to see more of them, fly through them a little bit more, spend some time on them, whatever. But the planets that we do get to see and we do get to spend some time on, I, I liked them and I enjoyed that aspect of it because I don't remember in The Last Jedi, at least, other than the one gambling planet, I don't remember there being anything else other than, be, than being in space. So it is nice to visit new worlds. I guess that means maybe for Star Tours at Disneyland or Disney World, they'll have some new planets as well. Here's hoping. John Boyega's Finn is still a confused character in this. I mean, I think he's been confused the entire time at what he really wants. Does he have a crush on Rey or is it just the flavor of the week? And then what is exactly that he's trying to go for? I mean, he defected from being a stormtrooper, so he wants to be a good guy. He kind of is a good guy, but... I'm not sure that he really knows absolutely deep down everything that he wants to do or even what his true motivation is. I do like, though, that he still continues to make the right decision, or at least the morally right decision, even if it's not totally heroic all the time. He is trying to strive for that. We get more of Kylo and Rey in this, and I love them together. I love their interactions. Even if they're not actually physically together, just the interactions that are going back and forth. I mean, in Last Jedi, they introduced the Force talk. At least that's what I'm gonna call it. I don't know exactly what it was called, but where they're not in the same spot, but they're able to communicate and even eventually see each other by just using the Force. 
and this they use it again and i liked that i, I thought it was great they introduce some new elements within there and I, I like that even more because it just progresses what was already set up and their interactions are just they're a lot of fun i mean from the very beginning when we first find them together and something clicks with them i liked it and i am glad that it continued on in this movie and just their story in general i i enjoy it and I like that it still continues on. I mean, they have a contentious relationship, absolutely. In episode eight, they, they work together somewhat, but they don't go together at the end. And so I, I still like that tension that is built between them. And we get to feel that in episode nine. Oscar Isaac's Poe, still the man child. I don't know how I feel about him still. I did not like him at all in Last Jedi. And he, he kind of has some of those elements still in episode nine, I just, mm, he throws a tantrum when he doesn't get his way. You know, he's hot tempered. He just, oh, I want to do it this way, or I want to do it this way, which also though sometimes can work in his favor. I just, he grates me wrong a lot of the time. I do root for him in this. I did end up liking him, especially towards the end. He gets to make some choices, some decisions. He gets to step up. And I liked that. And I like that we get to see him step up and it kind of is a redemption of his character, especially from episode eight. All right, the elephant in the room, the emperor, Palpatine. We hear his laugh in the trailer. Well, I'm not gonna tell you what how that is in this. That, that's just a massive spoiler. I can tell you it is addressed, it is resolved, it makes sense, it's awesome. I really love that episode nine has a story and a direction in mind. I don't feel like the first two episodes, seven and eight being the first two of this trilogy, that's all I'm talking about, that they really knew exactly where they were going. I felt like they were just kind of aimless a little bit, like, oh, I think we're going to go this way. Here, we'll introduce some characters. Let's see what happens. And this one really had a purpose. And I felt it and I loved it because it was driving me someplace and I wanted to go there. Are there wonky moments in this film? Yes, there are. Like, for example, a character is left at a location and then appears at another location without really any explanation of how they got there or how they were able to procure something to get there. It just, well, well we're here now. And it's like, mm, no, when, when I saw that character reappear, it was like, that no, that doesn't make any sense at all. And I need more explanation. There's also a Harry Potter Dementor scene and it kind of bummed me out because it's not really unique or new. I mean, because I've already seen it done at Hogwarts. I know that's really vague and that doesn't help you out a lot, but trust me, when you see it, you'll understand it. You go, oh yeah, Hogwarts, I get it. Now the characters go to Burning Man and it is awesome, the action that ensues there. And there is an epic scene where all of us went, oh my gosh, because it just, everything that culminates and it happens and it climaxes right there. And that's not the climax of the film, but of this scene, it's just so exciting and it's awesome to watch. And you just see like all of this power come into play and oh my goodness. And the action too. I mean, it's fast paced, it's up close, it's blurry at times because it's going so fast. But at that time it made sense. At that time, that action, the quick pace really added to the excitement of the scene because it needed to have that. Some of J.J. Abrams' friends are either back again or new people are here and they don't really serve any purpose. I mean, you have Greg Grunberg and Dominic Monaghan. Grunberg was from episode seven. He was there, he returns in episode nine. Monaghan is just brand new, but truly, honestly, they're throwaway characters. They serve no real purpose. I mean, it's great that he invites his friends on there, but it was almost, especially with Dominic Monaghan, it was almost distracting because I now see a hobbit on there who got off the island from Lost and it just, it was throwing me off. There's a newish weapon that is introduced when that huge fleet of Star Destroyers is shown. And you see them just that brief little bit on the trailer where they're all stacked up and it's really impressive to watch. But this weapon, it just is underdeveloped for my taste because they use it at one point and the aftermath, the effect of that weapon goes way faster than some of the larger weapons in previous films that were used to do the exact same thing. And I noticed that the reaction in the theater 
when the weapon was used is disbelief. And I think that's really what it came down to, that even me, I was like, mm, I don't buy that. I don't, I don't think that that would have happened. And then when it did, when you used it, it happened too quickly. It just, it was unsatisfying. Now, I know I've been listing a bunch of things that are negative and that, that I just didn't like or that bothered me, but truly, I walked out of the theater really enjoying this, and I felt satisfied by the ending as well. It was a decent conclusion to this latest trilogy. There's some great moments where really good tension and, and drama just ramps up. I mean, I was anxious at times for what was going to happen next, especially when you take into account the main source of conflict in the story. And it's not even unique to this film. I mean, it's been played out through all of the Star Wars films. It's the battle between good and evil, the force and the dark side. And even though it's not unique in that, I loved it. And I love that that was a main focus in this story as well, because we don't know what's going to happen ultimately. I mean, we... We hope we know what's going to happen. We think we know what's going to happen. But what if it doesn't? What if it takes a turn and it just throws everything on edge or on its ear and you're like, oh, wait a minute. But you know what? That might actually be satisfying too. Huh? Well, see, I'm not going to tell you how it ends because it, it may just turn out exactly how you think it's going to turn out. And that could be completely different from what I thought it was going to turn out. Now, if you're a fan of The Mandalorian and you've seen Chapter 7 of that TV show, there is a very, very small part that was shown in that that carries over into Episode 9 of the movie. And I loved it. I loved that they had that carryover, even though the, the time is drastically separated. But when it happened you knew exactly what it was going to do. And it was like, ooh, that's actually kind of cool because I know. I liked episode nine the best out of this final trilogy. I mean, from the story development to the character arcs to even just the drama, all of it, I really, really enjoyed, especially in comparison to the previous two. But as a standalone movie, I had a lot of fun with this. It's not perfect but it is enjoyable and something that I will definitely rewatch a lot of times because I had fun with it and I like how the story concluded and I like how they wrapped up some of the characters and even though some of it may be a little cheesy, I felt that it was a good ending, that it was a good conclusion, that it just, it paid respect to what George Lucas had created. There's no sex, nudity, or really even any profanity. There is a bunch of violence. I give Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker four out of five couches. So what is your favorite film out of all nine? If that's too hard, because it might be, that's, that's a tough choice there. What is your favorite out of each of the three trilogies? Maybe that's easier. You get to choose three films out of that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me. May the Force be with you. These are the droids you're looking for.